Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. So this is our first ever hybrid meeting, and actually first ever meeting in person since at, I think February of 2020, if not March. So uh, welcome back, everybody. It's so exciting. Um, so what we'll do is we have some people joining us via Zoom, and then all of us so will go ahead and get ourselves introduced. Um, so when you're introducing yourself, if you would please speak to the microphone so they can hear you uh, better, and then we'll just go from there. Um, for those that are new today, uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves with your name and business title and a tagline if you have one. So in my case, I'd say, um, my name is Zoe Jensen. I'm a licensed realtor in the state of Minnesota. I work realty hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Andrea Rocham. I'm a branch manager at Premier Banks and um, Minnesota owns Minnesota operated and the real person answers the phone. <laughs> My name is Alyssa Mo. I'm a business banker at Forever Bank, and I don't have a fun tagline this morning, so maybe I'll go up and for coffee. <laughs> uh, I'm Pam Hogdahl, the director of the Rochester Art Center, and uh, like Melissa said, it's a little early for a tagline. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica Dixon, Midwest Bank, and small business banker. I'll just talk about my hat. I like creative people and creative solutions. I think I'm supposed to say the word well. Jennifer Tetsky, I'm the Vice President of Resource Development at United Way, uh, where we're trying to help education and financial stability of everyone in our community. My name is Tanya Oi. Uh, I work with Diana Peel, the number one brand of community skincare, and if you're looking for a change in your skin, I'm the best. Um, I'm Shayla Neville. I'm a chiropractor at Connected Life Chiropractic. Uh, I see anyone and everyone, but I've done a lot of extra training for babies and pregnant mamas. I'm Jenny Cannon. I am the brand new lead sister at Christ United Methodist Church in Delta, Rochester, and brand new to the Midwest at all. And our tagline as a church is Grace in the City. I'll speak to the, the mic. Yes. This is up there. I'm Lynn DDA. I'm a visitor today. I wanted to hear the art center director. Um, I am a, a re I'm not even a retired designer. I'm still a designer. I just don't paint a shingle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy? I'm Nancy Peterson, and um, I'm doing my state university doctorate. Um, uh, it's never been done before. 38 year vocational educator, NAMI trained, so we've been getting all our teachers trained for the state of Minnesota. Um, because I'm fourth year and we didn't have our, I didn't realize that until I went to the NAMI meeting uh, this past year that our teachers um, um, don't just three and four tier teachers uh, got trained for NAMI. Um, and so now we want to try to get all teachers, all nonprofits, everybody. Um, and then, um, like I said, four tier. Um, I have two small businesses. Um, the doctor comes out of Triton. Um, and um, I um, am two business, small businesses uh, for the big project I'm doing uh, between Wisconsin and Minnesota, um, all the way from Jerome Turkey Plant to Magnolia's to Hormel to tie all our communities together for big business. But concentrating on small business, big impact, a while to be a teacher with my two small businesses, Nancy's Home and Garden Extravaganza, um, LLC, and uh, the other one is Bench Initiative Communities United. Um, and um, uh, uh, Bench Consulting LLC, uh, moving out to Southeast Minnesota um, through the state university system uh, for uh, Rochester area, um, Southeast Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Uh, Crystal, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Crystal Heim. I'm the communications coordinator at Ability Building Community. And uh, we help celebrate abilities one person at a time. Perfect, thank you. And uh, Crystal, will you please um, just write a little chat if you can't hear clear or something like that, I'll make sure. I'll make of course. Sure you <laughs> um, Gerard, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, well, I'm uh, Gerard Goulet and I'm just interested in learning about the Art Center. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we might get a couple people uh, that are running late. So once they join, we'll just go and we'll roll with the punches. Um, so for those that are attending for the first time today, um, we, well, actually, I should just reintroduce everything anyway, because it's in Zoom. Um, so we'll go ahead and go into small groups and we'll have a group discussion and then we'll come back together and then we'll listen to our speakers. So that's kind of the format. And during the small group, feel free to get people's business cards, contact info, anything. So, um, so today's uh, break, group breakout session topic has been brewing in my mind for, well, almost four years, but now five years because today is Olympic opening ceremony. And I was up at five, or I've been up since 5.40, 5.45 or so watching, and I cried twice already. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just so touching to me. So um, the, the thing I like about the Olympics and, and the thing I'd like to have you guys discuss today is I just love how humanity just brings their best people in whatever category. And then the best of the best go against each other, and then the greatest is announced. It's just tough, like as a non-athletic person, it's just great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wanted to see if you were to go to um, an Olympic of your sorts, what would you, what would be your category? Brag about yourselves, y'all don't do that. Um, so for example, uh, as a person, I'd be a professional, what I call myself a dog horse cuddler. They don't, my puppies, like there's one that doesn't like the cuddle thing, get all four against me. I call it force cuddling until he does. <laughs> so I think I'd, I'd get gold or silver on that, I think. Um, <laughs> and as a professional, I think there, there are a few things that I think I'm pretty good at. Um, I'm very good at flow charts and Excel sheets. I'd probably go for silver or bronze, but still I'm pretty good at it. Um, so make sure you talk about your talents and gifts, because because uh, I don't know if it's uh, the round table being humble, or I don't know if it's Midwest being humble, but y'all do that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go into group of three. Uh, will you please count off three, please? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, two, three. One, two, <laughs> and then Crystal and Gerard, uh, you guys will have to link up together. And then um, uh, if anybody joins, I'm sure uh, Sherry will be able to get you guys in the same group. You want to share anything from their group session? I think we all bloom when we were planted. Ooh, my bookmark <laughs> says that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have one that says that too. Well, I think uh, the, um, for those that are joining um, online, do you guys have, <laughs> can you guys hear us? Uh, Donna, can you give us a thumbs up if you can hear us? Yes, we can. Oh, perfect, thank you. Do you guys want to share anything? You don't have to. Uh, I honestly just talked about how we, maybe this makes us bad, but we don't watch the Olympics because our own kids have insane <laughs> sports yeah. schedules so i just had to take a guess at what was going on with the olympics and just said gymnastics and soccer because those are the sports that we watch with our kids <laughs> <laughs> well it looks like you, you just have olympics of your own anyway <laughs> so yeah. <that's> <laughs> yeah. um, guess right. what i got here late can you believe that so i didn't say anything <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're here anyway, Donna. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, get the presentation started. Any comments at all from you? You don't have to, but okay. Okay, sounds good. So uh, uh, what we'll do is if, if anybody wants to have contact information for somebody, we will um, have extra time at the end. We'll oh, have a couple more minutes. All right, really, really quick before people have to head out um, towards the end. Our next meeting will be third Friday of August. And I'm sorry, Sherry, I forget the date. Um, third Friday of August, and we will be virtual, just so you know. Um, and uh, there will be no speaker per popular demand. <laughs> so I'm getting married. 
Well, yeah, that too, that too. Uh, but uh, there will be no speaker, and um, we'll have the several different group breakout sessions with different groups, and we'll mix again. Um, because when we voted, what was that back in March or February? That was something that people wanted to have. They wanted to have extra time to be able to connect with each other. So we'll do that next month. It will be virtual. Um, our moderator will be Emily Watkins from Rochester Women's Magazine. Yay! So it'll be. I've got those today if you want to. <laughs> Perfect. I hope she's watching the recording. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so that's what will be our August meeting. And then just for one more housekeeping is in September. And I also forget the date, the third Friday of September. Uh, when we meet, um, we September and on, we will be in person. And when we do meet in September, our speaker will be Melissa Brinkman, CEO of Custom Alarm, um, and she will be talking about just the male-dominated field and also just um, security and alarm system too, because uh, when we did that vote, somebody was talking about beefing up their home system. So I thought that would be good. Uh, good topic there. And then in October, we have Mayor Norton come in. And then November, we have a speaker tentative. It's not confirmed yet. So I'll finish up the year or get it planned out pretty soon. <laughs> and Zoe, yeah. if, um, if members, members from this group would like to speak on a topic, um, would you um, like to speak? Um, what's that? Would you like to speak? Yeah. Okay. I, I wanted to way back when, but I think this is a good time now. Perfect. Um, uh, so at some point, I'd really like to. Speak. I will connect with you separately then. I have some people that are tentatively kind of booked and they have to verify their schedule, but I'm happy to yeah. schedule you. Up, so thank you. Yeah. Um, no, okay. Oh, thank August. you. Yes. August 20th and September 17th are the two yeah. next two upcoming meetings. Um, all right, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys. And then um, typically I say if you have any questions, call and text and email me. Um, I'm leaving in eight days to get married. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I'm so sorry, Sherry. Email Sherry. <laughs> and you um, have been selling houses in between, and we really appreciate you um, uh, being live and just oh, really talking you. through what's going on. and working with people. Thank you oh, so thank much you. for what you do. I'm your teacher. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. Um, okay, so I can't take a compliment. That's a thing that I can't oh, add. <laughs> <laughs> like if it was the Olympics, like I'd be on the bottom. I'd be like, all right, moving on. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, are you set up to take over the screen? I, uh, I won't be taking it over. I don't know how, how Sherry got set up, but I think once she... Puts it up there, I'll just start talking. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, all right, let's welcome our speaker today. And I'll have you introduce yourself so that that way everybody can hear. So I'm not sure that Pam. I'm not sure that we're able to hear Pam from that distance, Zoe. Yeah. Uh, Gerard, can you hear Pam? Okay. Yes, they should be able to hear. Well, okay, I'm not gonna That's okay. Sonny, you'll, have the, you'll have the screen. You're going to see the yeah. presentation. Gonna, you don't need to see it. <laughs> Hello, how can I help? Yeah, so if you're going to speak up, the microphone is right here, right here. Okay. You're like, where's the boss over there? <laughs> 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 well, she's the boss. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I'm Pam Caserta, that's all. Uh, I've been with the Rochester Art Center as the executive director since June 1, 2020. We moved here, you know, in the thick of the pandemic. Uh, we were previously in Southeast Wisconsin along Lake Michigan, in Port Washington, Cedarburg, and um, Sheboygan. And prior to that, um, uh, we were in Minneapolis, or I was in Minneapolis for about 15 years. I worked at the Walker Art Center for 13 of those years. And we moved to Wisconsin in 2013. Um, I'm a native of Duluth and um, I tailed it out of there as quickly as I could and <laughs> did an exchange year in Japan uh, in high school um, and uh, really loved the Twin Cities. Um, Rochester was never on my radar. Uh, 
and and coming to this organization, I have to say, was um, was definitely a leap of faith uh, to uh, to know that it had had a pretty rocky history. But when I looked at the map, I thought this is this is actually there's something about this. I being from Duluth and having family in Duluth, and my husband has family in Madison. And uh, we've been really heavy on our family ties in Madison and haven't been able to spend any time with our family in Duluth. Uh, Rochester's right in the center. It's equidistant. <laughs> so uh, it's working out really well. Uh, we love it here. We love our house. I love the team that I work with at the Art Center. Um, and you know, we're, because everything is opening up slowly, we haven't really had a chance to explore Rochester the way we would have in, in normal time. Um, but it's, it's been a really great opportunity for me and my team to slowly ease into working together and um, fine tuning our systems within the art center. So uh, a lot of positives to making this huge change during the pandemic. So that's, that's a little about me. I, and then I think I will just say advanced slide when we need to move to the next one. So let's go ahead and advance. Thank you. Um, this is just the art oh. center through time. Our, oh. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm old enough to remember all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Even the little tiny one. Really? Oh, that's cool. The Methodist Hospital is where that used to be. Oh, wow. Yeah. The white building or the? The white building on the left. Cool. Uh, and I don't know if Donna, I'm assuming you might have attended our annual meeting. Um, there, I don't know if anybody else had a chance to attend on Wednesday, but if you did, you're, this is going to be a snooze fest for you because there's, it's like all the slides from our annual meeting. <laughs> um, so here we go. Uh, we'll advance. Uh, this is Newton Holland, our founder, and of course he worked with others to, to make the art center a reality. But um, this is our articles, our original um, articles of incorporation. And I think it's really interesting to, to call out what we, what we started out to do, set out to do, and what we are continuing to do. So the business and purpose of said corporation shall be to give the citizens of Rochester, Minnesota, men, women, and children, the opportunity to know, practice, and enjoy the arts, to offer the same opportunity to our large transient population in order that leisure time may be used for creative activity, to show the vital relationship of the arts to our daily lives, to join with the schools, churches, the library, and other community groups to make Rochester a cultural center worthy of its scientific achievement. This purpose will be carried out through exhibitions, lectures, classes under qualified teachers, workroom publications, and information services, which will report and explain the activities of the center, set objects and purposes to be done and performed on a nonprofit basis and solely for educational purposes. So I feel very proud to say that we have been doing that and continue to do that 75 years later. This is our 75th mm -hmm. anniversary. Advance, please. Uh, so we just welcomed three new board directors. So this is our, our current board um, and uh, really excited for the um, diversity of skills, the diversity of, of perspectives that our board brings. And um, I, just, I think we've put together a really great team this year and really looking forward to seeing what they what they get done they're very they're very um, um, animated right now so mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's great advance please so one of the things that I've been really able to focus on this year which has been great in the one year here is just reinforcing our foundation um, and a lot of that goes into just like cleaning up the dark closets, digging out the skeletons, um, and, and working with the staff to kind of build some, some trust and, uh, and encouragement amongst them. Um, so right now, we're kind of at a point where we can, as a, as 
staff and board were able to go back to developing our core documents. Now we've done a lot of that nitty gritty stuff. We can um, focus on the documents that make us a museum that follows best practices. So um, that goes from like code of ethics to a collection management policy to strategic plan. The next thing that we're really working on right now is engaging and growing our member base. We did our first membership appeal letter in years, and um, you know it was so um, so wonderful to receive the, the positive um, feedback or the positive um, reinforcement through that appeal. We did reach our ten thousand dollar goal this this spring through that appeal, and. Um, and there are a lot of great membership benefits, but I'll, I'll outline some of those later. Uh, excelling in best, best of practices, like I mentioned, just through having those core documents is going to, to get us a lot further in, um, in excelling in that area, being a, a really strong museum, being a really strong museum for our community and, uh, and delivering on those principles that we set out to, to deliver on. And then preserving our institutional history. I think a lot of organizations struggle with this. Uh, I have a, um, a small background in archives from the Walker Art Center. And so I, you know, I kind of understand the, the process of establishing an archives and also the necessity for it and how it can help us know who we are, why we're here, what, we're, what we can do next. So, um, so that's our, that's where we're at right now, the working, reinforcing our foundation. Advance, please. So this is a really boring looking slide, but it's, I had to pack a lot in. I just wanted to highlight our com commitment to programs in the community through mm -hmm. this past mm -hmm. year. So these are all things that we're doing right now. We have opportunities to explore the arts for all ages, local artists on view in our galleries and the shop, Jess Peterson is one of them. Uh, Total Arts Day Camp continues. We have been doing it consecutively for 50 years. That was started by Judiana Frio. Mm -hmm. Kids Winter Art Workshops. We were able to do that online this year. Open House uh, was a, a program in April where we, we were able to open our galleries for the first, you know, not for a public event, I should say. Our galleries have been open throughout the pandemic. Um, uh, so we were able to kind of highlight and celebrate our exhibitions in person uh, in April. Art Eater online workshop. Everything we've done, we have we have really pivoted uh, this past year to do a lot of online programs. And uh, one thing that I guess I'd like to to uh, give some recognition to our staff. There, you know, it's a really small team. There's seven of us, and they never complain about having to do a hybrid program. Um, you guys have a really great setup here <laughs> with the, the TV, with the camera, and it's like, this is, this is nice, I gotta, I gotta do this. Um, because we do struggle with it, it's not easy. But in meetings with other organizations from around the state that are doing you know, similar things with the arts, uh, in arts organizations, they complain and they say, we can't do hybrid programs. It's just not possible. We have to tell our directors we can't do it. And I'm sitting there thinking, there's seven of us and we're doing it. <laughs> um, so I'm really proud of our team. So Art Eater online workshop, you'll see a picture of this later. Um, it, was, it was a fun project. We do artist talks. They've been in line, online and uh, hybrid. So i um, always trying to, to keep those going. Curatorial and public art tours have happened throughout the year. Um, one of our volunteers, Carrie, can, uh, Carrie Robinson Cannon, uh, has been leading art for trails tours and she did those uh, really successfully last year. My mom and I went on one and just brought my mom to tears. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club was, um, stationed in NCC last winter, and we were able to do facilitate um, workshops and tours for them over at the Art Center, and they just loved it because it was the only opportunity they got to kind of get out of a space that, you know, during the pandemic, they were so confined to, to kind of four walls and, and home. So that was a really wonderful opportunity. Um, creative Crawl just happened. We were very happy to be a part of that community-wide project. 
art kits we've been that was a huge pivot for us to start selling art kits in our um, shop and um, and to be able to sell them online donna loffler is one of our our subscribers sending them on to california i think to her nephew thank you donna <laughs> um night market was a huge success I can't tell you how amazing it was. We had over 8,000 people walk through wow. our front doors wow. that night. So oh, well, when's your night? next one? The, the August one? 21st, I believe. Okay, because the Dutch County Fair was at the same time. So oh. I wasn't able to go to that. Yeah. So August, what was it? Uh, 21st. Okay, I'm pretty sure. I want to be able to get to that because that looks so cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was amazing. And then We Are Water was a great partnership we did with the Center for Humanities and with the city of Rochester. And we put together um, 400 art, uh, kits, kind of art kits, science kits, steam kits um, in that project and, and distributed them throughout the city, through the library, through the schools, and through the art center. So that was great. Um, Portrait Exp uh, Express was a, uh, an online immersive painting course that Pat Don Walker led for us. Day of the Dead, Youth Poetry Slam, those were in conjunction with um, Rochester Ensemble, um, sorry, Rochester Arts Ensemble. And, and then artists are compensated for contributing their work at the Art Center. So whether they're consigning in our gift shop or they're showing in our galleries, we wanna recognize that, that their work uh, is their time, it's their job, you know, they put a lot of um, effort and creativity into it that we can't bring, you know, not all of us mm -hmm. can deliver. So, um, so we're really proud to be able to compensate our artists and, and treat them as working professionals. Uh, all right, let's advance. So there's Carrie doing a tour for Boys and Girls Club in the exhibition Lifeline. Um, Zoe had a portrait in that exhibition uh, and we were really pleased to be able to put this, this show on. Um, it was organized by Callie Morrison, who has been at the Art Center for six years now. She's our longest running employee and she's, she's seen a lot of stuff and her passion um, to, you know, to put on a show like this in the middle of the pandemic and just get it done. Um, it's, it was Rochester Essential Workers um, portrayed by Rochester artists. So it was a really oh, wonderful hey. community initiative. And, um, and then all of the um, portrait sitters received the portraits. So, oh. so Zoe's got hers today. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can advance, please. Um, here's just a, a little example from Art Eater. So what they did was they had a little drawing they got a packet that they could print out or get mailed to them. <laughs> and, and then we did like a whole online virtual class and you could do your little drawings in the box like you were making a flip book. And then you take a picture with your cell phone and text it to this guy, Trigby Martin from Minneapolis. And then it would like automatically come back to you within a minute and animate your little image. Oh, so this wow. this little image goes doo, 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 and and then it always says something really cute like chomp chomp thanks that was delicious. <laughs> Please advance. <laughs> All right, so the next um, many slides will probably go through these a little quicker. Were put together by Zoe Chanel, our curator, and so so full disclosure, <laughs> I'm just poaching from her presentation. Um, she has been an incredible uh, force this year. Um, we had a lot of transition and she just took the horse by the reins and she is um, knocking it out of the park. So our exhibition schedule is booked up to 2024. And now I'm at the point where I have to just say, you know, people want to do exhibitions and I say, I'm sorry, we're going to have to just put the brakes on and focus on the things that are on the schedule right now. <laughs> so, um, so it's always been wonderful. Um, so we, this image is of a patron uh, looking at one of the artworks that it's in our current exhibition, The Human Scale, which is an, a really incredible exhibition coordinated by Hair and Nails Gallery out of Minneapolis. Um, they're our first guest curators since we kind of switched our, our curatorial model. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it was just a fantastic 
opportunity. It could not have gone better. It, it was just, it's been amazing. So they're going to be doing some um, performances on our galleries, uh, September 25th and I believe October 29th. So it'll be a really, there's a lot of interesting things that go on program-wise in conjunction with our exhibitions. Okay, let's advance, please. Um, some of our summer programs, you know, we've got kind of arts programming that's like, a, this one's really interesting because it's a little bit more intimate. Um, so our members are invited to, to go to the homes of three artists. We already did Jessalyn Finch. Um, you'll see one more image, but this is an image from her Art for Neighbors program. Um, so just for one afternoon or evening, these artists are welcoming people, welcoming people to their home and putting on a, an extravaganza or a happening. And um, so our upcoming ones are with Chris Rackley on August 29th and Bobby Marinas on September 10th. If you are interested in attending either of those, please reach out to me um, directly and we'll get you in. It's just kind of a, a more private affair because the artists are, you know, they're private homes. So we're really, really pleased that they are willing to welcome people to see their, their work in their, in their space. Um, and then more information is also on our website. Okay, we can advance. So there's a picture um, of Jessalyn in her yard. She's in the long black dress, of course. This was a really like interesting experience happening. <laughs> okay, let's advance. How many people attended at yeah. her house? Uh, I, it's it wasn't like a huge things so I would say probably 50 people through like as like a trickle through the evening but I don't actually know exactly how many no. um so uh, uh I, I knew how to pronounce Nicole's last name last summer and I don't know how to pronounce it anymore um so Nicole uh, Nicoyam Para and Eric Anderson and Zoe Chanel uh are going to be doing a workshop on August 7th and August 14th. Um, and so it's just, I think, a really immersive experience. Lunch is provided. This is an amazing opportunity over at Bear Creek Park. Um, for more information, definitely check our website. But I, I would definitely encourage you to check this out. You know, if, you, if you have a few hours to go over on one of these days, you should definitely register. And, and um, they're, they're such strong thinkers and creative thinkers and, and doers um, that this opportunity, I can't really stress enough. Like, you know, I can't describe it to you, but it's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Bear Creek Park, you're talking about in Southeast, right? Uh, yes, it's like across the river from Mayo mm -hmm. High School. Yep. So mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember the name of that. It's not Monroe. Um, Marion yeah, 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 yeah. Road, mm -hmm. Road yep. past Quick Trip, you it's like right after that you turn into Bear Creek Park. It's a really great um, location to have it. I know that that, that has been an area that is a bit disinvested in. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is a project that Zoe and Eric did last year. They put up Yield is the name of this artwork as part of Art for Trails. And um, so, yeah, so they're going to just kind of keep building on this project. Let's advance, please. So exhibitions currently on view, we have the Iraq, um, Home of Memories that was coordinated in uh, collaboration between the Iraqi and American Reconciliation Project and Home of um, Carry On Homes, which is a group that Zoe is a part of in the Twin Cities. And um, so this was a traveling exhibition for us and wonderful show about um, Iraqi Americans creating home here in Minnesota. And tomorrow from noon to three, we are having an Iraqi American cultural celebration at the Art Center. It's a free event. There will be food, there will be music, there will be art or calligraphy. You can write your name in calligraphy. Mm -hmm. 
So please come down noon to three tomorrow at the Art Center. Um, I think it's going to be a busy day. So if you're looking, for, if you're not planning on walking or biking to the Art Center, I would recommend probably parking in the Double Tree parking lot on First Street rather than the Mayo Civic Center ramp. Um, they're both the same same distance to walk. Um, so, but it's going to be an amazing celebration, cultural celebration, and Almadina it will be um, um, selling food. Wow. So you can go to the farmer's market from um, uh, morning till yeah. noon and then go there afterwards and still have a whole art eventful day. Yes. Okay. Um, in advance. Um, so here's another shot from that expedition. Sorry. Look in advance. Uh oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so yeah, there's just a, another little pitch for tomorrow's event, and um, and then on August third, we also have a virtual artist and storyteller talk with Jafar Al Nabi and Ines Al Nabi, um, and yeah, it's just been a really wonderful exhibition, great program. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to our e newsletter. Uh, I would definitely recommend you can go on our website and subscribe right on our home page. Um, we'll send out, we send out emails once a week and just gives you the full, you know, what's going on, what's coming up, volunteer opportunities. Um, so kind of keeps you in the know. All right, let's please advance. Another exhibition on view currently is um, Counter Spaces. This was uh, coordinated by Yuko Taniguchi and Angie Maya uh, at University of Minnesota Rochester. And um, this was a really, like, we just, we whipped this together really quickly. We wanted to showcase the artists, the students' artwork before the end of the school year. So we put this up in May. And it's um, BIPOC students uh, responding to racialized violence. And so they've done this through artwork and through poetry as part of a creative writing process. And um, they are giving tours July 26th and August 17th. There also will be workshops in coordination with this on, on September 4th and January 8th. And um, the artwork will rotate in the fall and then again at the beginning of 2022 to feature new students, um, you know, again, responding to, to this um, really difficult topic that many of them live with every day. So, um, so we're really, really pleased to be able to support our community in this way and to partner with the University of Minnesota in Rochester in this way. Do you know what time the tour will be with artists? Uh, I do not. Uh, Bring it up quickly. So, so July twenty sixth. How can that be? Three to four. Oh, this is this one is for you and our staff and faculty. So that one scratch off your your list. <laughs> if you really want to come, we can we can squeeze you in. Um, we can definitely make that possible. And then on August 17th, this one is also for you and our staff and faculty. So just send me an email if you guys want to, to join one of those tours. Um, the, my email address, just so you guys all know, is Huggall, H-U-G as in good, G as in dog, a H L at Rochester Art Center dot org. Okay, we can advance. You can advance, please. Thank you. So there's um, the students and our staff and volunteers uh, uh, as the students are giving a tour to our group. And let's advance, please. 
Another exhibition on view currently is Preston Drum Bubbles. Preston is um, from North Carolina and currently lives in the Twin Cities. And um, he's going to be providing a workshop on October 9th. He also did do a really awesome artist talk that was hybrid, and that is on our website. Um, this is a really interesting installation, immersive installation, where the, um, the artist is dealing with home memories. Uh, his wife was pregnant through the pandemic, and, uh, and then his, his older son um, his first word word came out during the pandemic, and it was bubble. Mm -hmm. And we all think about all those bubbles that we were creating during the pandemic. Pandemic, and that so that was a very <coughs> meaningful for Preston. That that was his son's first word. Um, we can advance. Ruth Micus uh, is on view in our entry corridor. Um, she is a um, local artist. And her funding came through the Southeastern Minnesota Arts Council. They provide a grant to artists to exhibit throughout the, um, the region. But most of the artists come our way because they really want to be shown at the Rochester Art Center in our beautiful building. So, um, so we have the Rooted program to support that, that exhibition, exhibition series. And um, one of the other things that I'd like to note about uh, the location where Ruth's exhibition is, is when you first walk into the art center, um, when I arrived, the gift shop was tiny, just a few things. The um, entry corridor was some couches and a uh, big welcome sign and donor boards. I appreciate our donors. Uh, they made our building possible, possible, but I think everyone's seen their signs over the past 16 years and it was time to do, to activate that space in another way. So um, I'm really pleased to be able to, to have it now where people can walk into the building, into the art center, and they see art. The first thing they see is art. And I think that that's really important. And um, so Ruth's exhibition is there and a wonderful um, collection about collecting. You can advance, please. <clears throat> So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Heron Neal's gallery curated the human scale. This is a really incredible exhibition. I would encourage you to get over to the Art Center and see it before it closes on October 24th. Um, we do have, like I said, we have performances in conjunction with it on September 25th. And then the October date has, is probably changing to October 9th. So that's not firmed up yet. But um, really incredible exhibition about uh, about it. Yeah. <laughs> Advance, please. So there are some more images of the human scale. And um, I, I asked Kristen and Ryan to activate as much of the atrium as possible as well. So there's art out in the atrium and just, you know, the whole building is feeling really active right now, which is was right. very important to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, you know, just a little, you know, tooting my own horn again, when I came to interview at the Art Center in March 2020, so like literally like the day that they were saying they were going to shut down schools um, for the pandemic, there was one exhibition open in the whole building, and it was on the third floor in a gallery space that was built to be a studio space, and, um, and I just, I looked at the the board that was interviewing me and I said, this cannot happen. This will never happen again. You will not have one exhibition on view if I'm here. And so here we are, we've been through a pandemic and we have six exhibitions on view and oh. the entire building is active. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, we can advance please. Just opening, um, this actually is on view now. Um, it will not be fully installed until the 28th. Uh, we just have some didactic to, to finish up. Um, but on our third floor, um, Jocelyn Suzuka Figueroa is uh, an MCAD, recent MCAD graduate. Uh, we'll probably be partnering them with them annually to show the MCAD graduate mm -hmm. and or uh, the, the, the featured MCAD students. So 
Um, so they they choose the student and by you know a CAD committee. I don't know. <laughs> and, um, and we have the pleasure of exhibiting their work. And so these are you know just really cutting edge new new stuff coming out. This student, um, she well I can't say student anymore. She's not a student anymore. Um, but she was she kind of waffled on what she wanted to show and and um, suddenly changed three weeks ago. Like I'm gonna just totally do something different. Um, so she's showing scrolls of, um, she's a Japanese American and she was able to dig out photos from her um, family from World War II and then picked out small portions of that and, um, and then put them on these scrolls. So, um, so these are all, uh, I think Ghosts of the Negative, The Last Soldiers is, is responding to the fact that these are the last soldiers in Japan. And um, so looking forward to learning more about her exhibition. You can advance, please. And George will be on view this, um, this winter, fall winter. Let's advance. I want to be conscious of time. <coughs> uh, we have an intern curating uh, Rochester Pride. Um, we have a small exhibition that will happen, and there is a call for art for, for this installation. Um, deadline for submissions is August 4th. To learn more about that, uh, if you know any queer artists who would like to, to step up and um, submit some new work, please have them email queerart at rochesterartcenter.org. You can advance, please. Another exhibition that we're looking forward to. So lots happening here. We'll advance. Uh, this one's going to be fabulous. Um, I don't know if any of you have watched RuPaul's Drag Race, but this is a current contest contestant, Utica Queen um, from Utica, Minnesota. And uh, Ethan, the drag queen, currently lives in Minneapolis. Um, phenomenal costuming and he just puts this stuff together you know on the fly um, so we are thrilled to be exhibiting his garments from that you will have seen on that on that radio show um, we think this is probably going to be an international sensation we're going to have a virtual gallery of this one we've done virtual galleries of some of our other exhibitions this past year um, and we're looking but this is just like he, wow, he has a TV thing. show. He was featured on a TV show um, called RuPaul's Drag Race. It's been on for like, I don't know, 13 seasons now, I want to say. Um, so it's one of those reality TV shows where they get a bunch of people together and then they have to all kind of like compete. And one is the best. One, one drag queen is the best drag queen of the, of the season. <laughs> so, yeah. Less advanced, please. Um, Deborah D'Souza is going to be featured in our entry corridor this uh, fall, uh, along with other um, artists or local participants who can um, help create the artworks. So there are, uh, you can register to do a workshop with Deborah, uh, and then that, what you create, will end up in our entry corridor. So if you're interested in, in a, um, a workshop with her in Mosaic, please check out our website. And if you could advance, there's a little, another image just kind of showing the process. Um, so we're looking forward to that and um, people have been signing up. So if you wanna get your spot, check out our site or check out our e-blast that we send out every week. You can advance. I'm happy to say that I'm Watkins from Lindsay and I are taking one of those. Yay! So well, we haven't decided a date yet, but we're okay. gonna do that. Great. Awesome. <laughs> have, you done, have you done the pottery at the 125 live too? No. Oh, because <laughs> there's a lot of cool art things going on. Yeah. Between, and I'd really like to see that in Rochester. Yeah. 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 Amarama, another local artist, is going to be um, exhibiting through the Rooted program again uh, this winter. We're looking forward to welcoming her into the galleries. You can advance, please. Um, another upcoming exhibition. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yep. Uh, 
um, Zoe says, Zoe Chanel says her work is incredible. So I'll take her word for it. Mm -hmm. You can advance. And um, another exhibition that's near and dear for Zoe Chanel is um, photogrammetry, which is some some science thing that I don't know anything about. She just she's she's got her hands in many many different pots. So looking forward to seeing what she does with this. So that's doing things with photo photographs. Yeah, then? yeah, but cool. it, but much more complicated. Very <laughs> geometric kind of thing. I have no idea. Some new <laughs> new you know this this younger generation. <laughs> I have no idea what they're up to. Um, you can advance, please. And then another um, show that Zoe's really excited about, she's co-curating with John Sherman from Minneapolis, and they're going to be activating spaces in the art center that you would never think to activate with art. So like the weird dark corners, the weird stairwells that no one knows about, <laughs> the elevator. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see. Um, but this is an open call for, for artists, uh, a juried exhibition. So um, if you know artists who are interested in getting involved, um, keep an eye out and send them the information when it comes out. I think the artist call is, is going to be coming out really soon. Let's advance. Um, Cecilia Corneo Sotelo is going to be doing a, a solo show in our main gallery next summer. And, um, and then she has the Wandering House, which is like a mobile recording studio. Um, and lots of programs that that they're doing in conjunction with that. Um, so, yep, we're looking forward to welcoming welcoming her as well. You can advance. Um, so, another um, project, upcoming project with the Iraqi American Reconciliation Project is music despite poetry despite, and um, you know, I, sh I, I think going to be another really beautiful, impactful exhibition. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I like the idea of music and dance, you yeah. know, and entering that in yeah. other mm -hmm. types of art. Let's advance, please. Um, Melissa Ineo, I wish it was a coming out. Um, this is, she's an Italian artist. And Zoe has connected us with um, uh, the Italian um, Council in Minneapolis, and they are um, um, this, the artist. I guess in Italy, it's being gay is very controversial. So this was her way of, of showing um, mature couples, you know, older older gay couples. Um, embracing or just you know showing their, the the intimacies of the love and, um, and I think it's going to be really beautiful. But it's about her own journey uh, coming out and and kind of the difficulties with that. Um, and then we are uh, looking forward to Bor having Boris Wickerman uh, bring an exhibition to us that will be it's uh, at University of Minnesota. Um, the Wiseman, he curated Walk Back to Your Body a couple of years ago. Uh, and Yuko Taniguchi, who had coordinated the Counter Spaces exhibition that I had mentioned earlier, was one of the artists in this exhibition. And so we're going to do kind of a, a new, a second iteration kind of built on the first exhibition. Um, you know, he's, of course, very excited to be working in our building and the grand spaces and um, trying to, to activate some really unusual gallery spaces for this exhibition that would normally you know, think of like our main gallery would be the spot. Well, no, it's not going to be in the main gallery. This main gallery show is going to be in all the other spaces. So we're excited uh, to see what he, what he can help bring. And, um, and this, this exhibition, it, the artists are working with medical professionals on all of their artwork. So, um, so there's a lot of kind of that steam connection again. Uh, let's advance one. You can advance. Okay. Uh, and then looking ahead, we're really excited to bring in Ann Leibovitz. She's going to be doing a beautiful, large scale installation in our atrium. 
Um, you see those the textiles on the left side there. Just imagine those floating from our 50 foot atrium all the way down. So that's going to be tremendous. Um, the club editor, um, Ruth, and I'm blanking on Ruth's husband's name. They are chair collectors, and Ruth put together a great um, idea for a mini golf exhibition. Uh, interactive <laughs> exhibition based around her chair collection. So it's going to be a really fun thing to come in and do in the winter of 2023, 2024. Uh, and then um, Chronic is, an, and that's a working title, is very near and dear for Zoe Chanel. Our curator um, just recently decided she wants to do an exhibition on chronic pain, which is something that she also deals with herself. And um, so I, you know, I think that this is going to be a really impactful exhibition and, and perfectly suited for Rochester. Mm -hmm. That always seems to pack the house if they have a medical tie. Yeah. I noticed. I think we should have let Zoe wear. She just doesn't have the most amazing, <laughs> interesting. Oh. <laughs> I didn't want to wake her up at 7. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bring her another time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can advance. You can advance, please. Yeah, she's multitasking. Um, so I just wanted to highlight again those partnerships that make our exhibitions possible. You can advance again. Um, some testimonials. This was the highlight of our trip, a patient um, at Mayo from mm -hmm. Indiana in January, right after we reopened our galleries. Um, I'll mention our galleries were, we reopened July 1st, so on 2020, when everything had shut down, we were able to safely reopen our galleries July 1st with, uh, I think we had four exhibitions on view right at that moment. And, um, and then we just maintained, we had to close down again at the end of November until January 13th for the second close, um, closure, but we were able to keep our gift shop open at, during that time, and we just, we turned the whole place upside down, all our closets cleaned out and did a garage sale in our grand lobby. Oh, oh, and wow. um, so we took advantage of the, the loophole that, that stores could be open and you know, our galleries couldn't, which made me crazy, but <laughs> we got stuff done. Um, thank you, Gerard. I'm almost done. We'll advance, please. Um, and our major funders and members make it all happen. So thank you. Can't, can't thank our members enough. Um, and you can advance. Advance, please. There we go. Um, and our 2021, 2022, 2021 sponsors um, helped us do some really fun things this year. Advance, please. Upcoming programs. This not to be missed, Pickup Truck Opera, August 12th through 14th. Oh. We will have opera outside in oh, park location um, on August 12th. I should tell you the exact locations. Sounds like August is going to be really yes. fun to open. Um, all right, August 12th, we have a performance at Goose Egg Park at 3.30. It's a, like a 25 minute performance to show up Goose Egg Park, 3.30, uh, and, and just get a, a little a bite of opera outside. And um, at noon that day, we'll have a, um, they'll be performing at Central Park. They'll also be performing at Central Park at noon on Friday the 13th. And again at 125 live at 2 p.m. on August on Friday the 13th. And then on Saturday the 14th, they're doing their full performance. So those other performances are just little snippets from the full performance. The full performance is like a 90-minute performance. Bring your lawn chair to East Mayo Park, so right across the river from the Art Center on oh. 6th Street. And um, uh, if you can register in advance, that's great. All of these performances are free. The, the full performance is the only one that we're asking people to register at. Um, you registered at the Art Center? Uh, online. Um, 
Yeah, so we'll, we're sending the link out each week in our e-blast. And um, this is a group that I volunteered with in Minneapolis in 2009 and made a lot of friends and they're just tremendous and um, wanted to bring their, their vibrancy to Rochester. Um, Art for Neighbors, we talked about. Yield, we talked about. Night Market, we talked about. Counter Spaces Tours, please let me know if you'd like to, to attend and we'd be happy to, to welcome you. Uh, please advance. Volunteer opportunities, um, pick up truck opera. We do just need help kind of spreading the word, especially within residential communities. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll be letting, you know, everyone at Charter House and, and um, other residences know that we're having these programs happening right outside their door. But anything that you can do to help spread the word will, will help greatly. Um, night market, we are we have sign up on our um, e blasts for door and gallery attendance. You know, with 8,000 people coming through, we definitely need more more eyes and greeters. So um, if you're able to join us for a couple hours one of those nights, it's a lot of fun. Um, and you know, if you're just like one of those people who like to like hide in offices and wants to help us stuff <laughs> envelopes, <laughs> let us know. Um, and uh, and then there's my email at the bottom. Yeah, I have a funny thing. I helped stuff envelopes probably like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't drink coffee out of champagne flutes. Oh, that sounds oh, like a oh, really dangerous <laughs> idea. To have coffee and they're like, no, we do this every year. Oh. <laughs> they're saying that. But yeah, they don't do it every year. They stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we're able to, to do it again. But yeah, I would I would recommend like a really heavy weighted cup. Not a, not, not like, <laughs> there's a lot of work going into those mailings. <laughs> um can advance one. Uh, membership is really essential to what we do. Um it just and it demonstrates community support. Um you know, even not not just to other individuals, but to the McKnight Foundation, to the Minnesota State Arts Board. The the more membership dollars that we bring in, the more that they see that we are valued in our community. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you are able to become a member at any level, it makes a huge impact for us and what we can do to deliver the arts in in Rochester. I, um, we're inviting all of our members to our member patio party on August first. Uh, to watch Calicia at down by the riverside. So that's one of the one of wonderful fun member benefits. 10% uh, off in our gallery shop year round, discounts on workshops and a total arts day camp. And then um, at the $250 level, you can go to museums all over the country for free. So um, really great benefits that, that can have a uh, real impact in many ways. What is the membership fee for the first time that you're talking about? Um, um, this year? To, for just individual membership is $35. 30? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we just come right to the office there. You can do it. Museum and be there. You can do it there or you can do it online. Yeah. Oh, I renewed it online this year. It was really easy. And do you have business cards? Yes, I do. I'll get those up. We could have some of that. I know we're at time. I think I just have a couple more slides. You can advance, please. Oh, this is the best one. Can you <laughs> click on that little link down in the bottom? Yep. This is the last slide. And then you're going to click on that. Um, just click on the, uh, you don't have to download it. You just should be able to just click. And then make it bigger over in the right corner. Right, bottom right. And that, yeah, that one. Oh. Down in the bottom right. Okay, or just push your space bar and we'll just watch it like this. Push play and that's perfect. And that is the end of my presentation. And if you turn up the volume, it'd be really sweet. Do you want to turn the volume up? Hmm. 